So hello and welcome back to video four in our email money mini course where I'm walking through how you can make an extra 500 to 5,000 dollars a month writing simple emails for other businesses. We're now on to video four where we're going to be talking about how to close copywriting deals without actually feeling like you are selling. This is where we are in the series so far and if you've not watched the previous three videos I suggest you go and check those out because it will make this video make way more sense. And yeah, with that said, we'll jump into video four. So here's what we're gonna go through in this video. So we've obviously done all the hard work of getting the client's attention, and now we want to get them on a phone call so we can share our irresistible offer and then close the deal. So what I wanna do in this video is show you what you can expect when speaking to a client for the first time on a call, how to actually get a yes every single time from them, then we're gonna talk about how to take payments because obviously you don't have a client until the money's landed in the bank in my opinion. And then we're gonna do some tips on like how to sell without feeling like you are selling or being pushy or feeling weird. What to expect when speaking to a client for the first time. And this is kind of like, um, uh, like a, a framework if you like on how to guide this for a better sense of sales call. So first off, you're gonna jump onto the call, you're gonna have like an intro and ice breaking session if you like. So, you know, you, you know when you jump on a phone call with someone for the first time, you'll chat about things that both you relate to, just to build a bit of relationship and rapport with each other. My advice is not to spend hours chatting on this stuff. We wanna keep this short and get into the reason why everyone's actually on the phone call in the first place. So, you wanna take control of the call. Now this doesn't have to be aggressive or invasive, but this helps you set expectations and establishes you as the authority. So you can do this by explaining to the client like how, how these calls usually work. So you can say like, um, hey John, glad to speak to you today. Here is how these calls usually work. And then you'll just let you go through your process. And we wanna ask questions to understand the client in relation to what you have to offer and how you can help them. So the whole process of this is to make it very, very open-ended and we want to be basically speaking as little as possible and letting the client do all the talking. So while we're making mental notes or even writing things down. And we do that by asking open-ending questions. We want to determine what success looks like to them. So what do they deem a good outcome from this? Again, asking questions and getting them to talk about what they see as success when it comes to emails, how much money they can expect to make, or like what they would see as success from like a, a revenue perspective. Like if you could bring in an extra few thousand dollars a month from a, a, a product launch every, every month or two, what would that look to a client? It could be different for everyone. You wanna give the clients confidence. So you can do this through providing results, you can share your track record, you can basically make them feel like they're in good hands. If you're new to this, you may not have a track record and being transparent is way more important than anything. So again, like I said, be honest, don't lie, just be transparent. Tell clients if this is your, like one of the first people you're working with on this new offer. Uh, integrity and work ethic is respected above everything else. Repeat the des desired outcome of the client back to them. You wanna get the client saying yes okay so you can literally say to them so john like i hear you want to do this hey you want to increase your monthly revenue with email and you want to do that without putting in as much work as you know humanly possible uh, does that sound right something like that like really that was the most ridiculous example but repeating what the client has already said to you back to them is a very good way to build confidence and get them on this what i would call the yes train Last point is sealing the deal. So you wanna show them what you're offering through your core offer. They kind of already should know this. Tell them the price, demo anything with numbers if you need to, like do as much of the math work as possible for them. And when you told them the price and like what the deliverable would be, just be quiet. Uh, let, let, let it marinate with the client, the prospective client, let them come back to you. Don't start trying to talk yourself out of the sale. So we're talking about open-ended questions on the call. So here's just some examples of some of the questions that you can ask to get a deeper understanding into what the client's desires are. 
So while you schedule today's call, you'll start to pick up different inklings from these questions and you can start taking mental notes from the answers they give you. Tell me more about your current email setup, what's worked and what hasn't. So this is gonna help you determine like what they're actually doing right now, whether they're actually doing anything. Uh, you could ask them straight up, how big your email list? How are you growing it right now? They may not even know this, they may just have a list of emails and be doing nothing with it. But all these question designs to give you uh, to paint a picture in your own mind of what's actually going on with this business straight away. And then, like I said before, you want to be asking, what does success look like to you? Because then you can repeat that back to them. Uh, and how are you currently keeping in contact with your list? So are you sending daily emails? Are you sending a newsletter once a month? Like, what are you actually doing? Because then that will also give you the cues to, to know with certainty that your offer is going to be superior and better to what they're already doing. Now, you may get some objections on calls like this. You may have people that have challenges with what you're offering. If a person says no, they have an objection, make a note of this so you can address it on any future calls. That's a big thing. If it's an objection to a payment, usually when someone objects to paying the price that you have, it's probably because you haven't provided enough value. So they don't think that what you're offering is worth or worth more than what you're charging for them for it. That's something that you can work on for future calls, but also you may want to have a payment plan in place or offer them sort of a, some sort of a downsell, which is like a DIY or like a do-it-yourself product that can get the client in the door. You can also do some test emails. So say for example, your main core offer is £3,000 or $2,000 to write an email sequence, which is kind of usual. You could instead to offer a, a write like a test email for them for like $100 which they can send out to the subscribers, see how it goes, and then after that, talk about a longer term relationship and uh, partnership together. That's a really easy way to build uh, rapport and get the client in the door. And you can actually get them some quick wins rather than them having to commit straight away to a bigger monthly fee where they don't know like what the outcome is gonna be. So if and when you get a yes, you don't have a client until the money is in the bank. So you need a way of taking payments that's ready to go. And taking a payment, Send the client an agreement that has deliverables on it. So this is basically where you are going to show like what the price they're paying is, what the monthly or the, what the deliverables are going to be, so what you're going to give the client, uh, the pricing, like I said, and the terms and conditions as well. You can create these agreements on like a simple Google document. That's all I ever use. And that just basically makes sure both parties, client and yourself are on the same page and everybody knows what's expected. Uh, during the project. Provide a payment link to them. So PayPal is usually what I use because it's simple. Everybody knows what PayPal is. You can create specific links with certain money amounts. So you can send the client uh, a link for them to pay with the price you've agreed. So there's no confusion there. It's just simply putting card details in and clicking a few buttons. And equally, you can use a company called Stripe, which is also great for setting up card payments. As soon as the money's in the bank, that's when the work begins. Don't start writing emails or doing work with a client until they have been paid, unless you otherwise agreed to do like a test email or a sample bit of work. I've had it in the past where I've, I've done this and started writing emails and done work for people and then they've never paid me, which is frustrating. Um, so that's that's just a word of warning. So must do's for successful calls. Uh, shut up. <laughs> don't, do, don't do more talking than they are. Ask open any questions and let them talk. Just ask really opening questions like I gave you examples of in this video and just listen to what they're saying and that's they're basically giving you the answers that you need to repeat back to them in order to seal the deal make sure you're on time and make sure your environment your office studio whatever is professional looking don't don't be late to phone calls that just sets a really bad example from the start or bad expectations don't have a, a meeting in a loud crowded place like a coffee shop or like if you've got crying babies in the background or some, anything like that, just make it so you're in a very nice secluded place, like, I don't know, office space where no one can interrupt you and everything can be as smooth and as calm as possible. Don't come across needy. So don't be pushy. Don't come across that desperate person who needs the sale. Uh, people can smell desperation a mile off. So yeah, don't act like you need this client uh, and have a template to follow. So I say template in, in uh, like 
brackets because you want like a process to follow that is personalized, okay? And the, the template should almost be a script as such that helps you stay on track and keeps the call focused. Okay? You wanna respect the client's time and get through this in the best way possible and fast way possible and stay focused on track. And then research as well. So before the call, make sure you know the basics about your client and or the prospect even on his business and his market and your market as well. So there might be certain certain types of language that a, a market will use, certain phrases. These are all gonna help you when you get on the call because it actually shows your expertise and it shows you actually done the groundwork into getting to know this person before you jump on. There's no point in getting on a phone call and uh, not knowing who the person actually is or like what business or what people that that business serves. You wanna do your research beforehand and that will help you separate yourself from the rest and showing that you, like, you do mean business. So final tips on selling without selling. Just remember, when you go into calls like this, you are gonna feel imposter syndrome so if it's the first time you jumping on and looking to close a deal like this just understand that all businesses want more sales if you have an offer you know it will help them achieve this your conviction should be stronger than their skepticism yeah, if, that, if there is any skepticism and that basically translates to they need you more than you need them uh, whenever somebody says no just understand that that is just one step closer to getting to a yes so anytime somebody says no, maybe it's worth digging into asking them why they didn't want to work with you because then you can overcome that objection in a future phone call. And then you can get to a point where your um, sales process is so refined and so slick that you will very rarely get any friction. It is just a numbers game. So the more people you reach out to, the more chance you are and the closer you are to getting a yes, more is better, like I was saying and money loves speed. So the quicker you can create valuable offers to your market, the faster you're going to be able to grow your income. It's really as simple as that. Um, my reason for putting out content like this is to position myself as an expert in this space, and you should be the same for creating content in your niche. So when people do come to you and see you on different social media platforms, they can see that you know your stuff, and you offer something of value. And the faster you can do that, the more you can do it, the closer you are to winning sales. And selling isn't bad as well. If you have something that can provide value to uh, people, like a market, it should be a moral obligation to like put something together to offer it to them. And the way you do that is through selling. And sales is the lifeblood of any business, as most people should know. If you have expertise and stuff, you're almost doing like a disservice to people by not offering it them. So selling should never be seen as this bad or sleazy or weird thing. Yeah, so I keep saying, if you want more copywriting tips like the, all the stuff we've gone through in this video, hit the link in the description of this video and you can join my email list where I send out almost daily copy tips to help you get better at copywriting, help you get more clients and pretty much everything to do with uh, making money online with the written word. So yeah, I hope this past four videos have been useful to you. I might add this in the future. Any questions on what we've covered so far in this video or your previous videos, comment below and I'll get back to you. And hope to see you over on my email list. Take care and see you in another video.